Welcome. Good morning. Turning to Mark 4, and we're going to be starting in verse 35. Let's get into the word straight away this morning. Mark 4, verse 35. It says, On that day, when evening came, he said to them, Let us go to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him along with them in the boat, just as he was. And the other boats were with him. Need to understand at this time, they've just, he's just done big ministry on uh, the other side of the Sea of Galilee and there was huge crowds and he was preaching from a boat and there was lots of little boats around him. So he's like, you know, to get out, it was going to be in the middle of the crowd. So it was, okay, let's go to the other side. And if you know Mark well, you'll know that on the other side was the demoniac um, of the Gerasene. So uh, there was a reason and a purpose behind this. But I want to focus on the little bit in between. Verse 37. And there arose a fierce gale of wind. The waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they became very much afraid and said to one another, Who then is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. All right, so I'm going to be talking on this section of scripture this morning and I've titled this message, Hush, Be Still. Some translations, your translation might say, Peace, Be Still. But I really like how the NASB says, Hush, Be Still. I want to read a, an excerpt from David A. Depra. Uh, he wrote, he neither slumbers nor sleeps. And I want to, he has a very descriptive um, way of describing this. I, I loved it, so I want, to, I want to share it with you. The wind was tossing the tiny ship. You should be able to see the ship on your screen right now, along with me. And I love how this picture depicts the little ships around him. They were all in the same situation. It was made of only wood and could not take much more. Yet only that fragile ship stood between the disciples and the raging sea. And they were terrified. They were helpless. They knew nothing that they could do. There, there was no, there was no thing. There was, there was no, no, no new thing they could turn to to make this stop. And he goes on. Jesus was asleep on the pillow. How could he possibly stay asleep amid such a storm? Why didn't the shaking and jarring, let alone the shouts of terror, awake him? Because all the boats would have been screaming and tossing and, and, and ready to sink. Amen. And there he was, calm. Where was Jesus? Calm. No, he stayed asleep. No terror in him. The disciples had followed him into this boat, beloved, but they had no idea that this is where he would lead, to the raging sea, to an untimely death. Where was Jesus? Where was God? He was sleeping and he wasn't paying attention to them. How can you sleep, Lord? Don't you care that we perish? Deliver us from death. But Jesus turned over and he really didn't hear them. How could he? The wind and sea were so loud that their voices were but a faint echo. Their cries, a distant sound. No, no, Jesus couldn't hear them. He was asleep. The storm worsened and the wood frame of the ship began to crack. Could you imagine yourself in this situation? The sail completely tattered. The taste of salt water was everywhere. But Jesus was asleep. And at last they woke him. Save us, we perish, they cried. And they had no idea what they wanted him to do. No, <laughs> no clue how Jesus could possibly solve this problem. But to him they turned and to him they ran. Maybe, maybe he could pray to God. Maybe, maybe he could get God to solve this problem. And notice our dilemma. And Jesus stirred, but he seemed unmoved. What was the fuss? Why are you afraid, he quizzed. Why are you fearful, oh ye of little faith? They must have murmured, is he kidding? Why 
does he think we are fearful? And why is he saying we're of little faith? Jesus finally arose and he commanded the wind and the sea and they obeyed. His disciples were astounded. They, they had not known what to expect. But this, who was this? That the wind and sea obeyed him. Jesus spoke nothing else to them. It was not yet time. But perhaps, perhaps he was remembering a psalm through his mind. 121 verse 1 to 4 and it says, I will lift mine eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that keeps thee will not slumber. He that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. He wanted to tell them but could not that the Lord is their keeper. He is never asleep. It may seem at times that he looks like he is asleep. It may appear to the eye as if Jesus is fast asleep in the midst of the storm which is tossing our lives to and fro. It may appear as if it is a deep sleep indeed. But faith doesn't rely on appearances. It relies upon God. Amen? That was David Dupre. Okay, the crisis of life has been compared to stormy seas. We are all in one right now. There's a global storm in the sea of our life right now. And they come upon us, these storms, whether we like it or not. Amen? Whether we're ready or not, it doesn't matter. There is no warning or preparation. They can just appear. And I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity to be out on the sea and watch a squall come up around you. I have. It is terrifying because it happens literally in moments and it's there. It, it rushes in, roils in, and it's upon you. They terrify us, these storms, and they knock us around to destroy all our stability and security. We don't know if we can survive them. And we don't know how long they'll last either. At least there is a storm at sea for most of us. For Jesus Christ, it was just a chance to grab 40 winks. You know, Mark was not of the 12 who wrote the Gospel of Mark. And his account of Jesus was from his mother and from those who'd lived with him and the disciples, particularly Peter, I believe. And as Mark tells us the story of what happened, and it was so important to him that he included it, the, the, the disciples were terrified that the boat was going to break up and everyone would die. This was a really real situation. Who knows that your storms are real situations? <laughs> there is real wind. There is real waves. There is real stress and torment and situation can be around you. Amen? But Jesus was asleep on a cushion, no less. Mark notes, adding to the contrast between Jesus' tranquility and the disciples' panic and fear, Jesus was asleep, seemingly oblivious to their impending doom. Amen? I love this picture. It's so, so profoundly calm. There is such a, an evidence of the water around him splashing and he's wet and on, on, a, on a pillow, on a cushion, and they're trying to shake him awake. Don't you care? Don't you care that we are perishing? And of course, Jesus quiets the storm with a word, but then chides the disciples, verse 40. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Remembering that he, they'd just come from him ministering to multitudes. Some of the lessons are obvious. Jesus has the power over storms of life. He, he experiences them alongside us, loves us, saves us from them, beloved, and wants us to trust him more than we do. Yes, they are the obvious lessons. And our Lord is utterly aware of this storm, what it means. He knows it all, how it all came into being and the solution. He loves you and he's experiencing it with us, church. You are not forgotten or forsaken, not for one second. Let's look at a lesson that may not be so obvious. Number one, storms don't worry Jesus. Let's look at that little picture again. 
Wow. <laughs> I love that. He is perfectly calm. He is right there in them, even resting. He isn't terrified. He isn't impatient. He isn't anxious. He isn't worried. No. He isn't questioning. He isn't doubting. He isn't angry. He isn't nervous. He isn't fearful. In fact, he is so calm, he's asleep. Amen. Now, this, this is at a time, of course, when he was the son of man. And as the son of man, he experienced tiredness and exhaustion. Right now, he's a living, risen God. And he never slumbers and never sleeps. To us, church, he seems asleep at the switch. This is how the Lord said it to me. He seems to have forgotten the storm or something. We wonder why he doesn't get up and, and resolve it and do something. Right now even. We start to wonder whether he knows the, if he knows the trouble we're in. If there's if, is there anything he can do about it. Whether he's really all he's cracked up to be. Come on, let's be honest this morning. COVID-19 or personal storms don't worry Jesus. There is nothing around us, around him, in this world, on this world, above this world. There is nothing that catches him unawares or that he doesn't know about. And like the disciples, we believe he's there. Beloved, they could literally see him there. They literally, were, he was in the boat with them. They knew he was there. But they saw him asleep. We don't have that luxury. We believe he is there. Most of the time, it seems like he is asleep, like at the Sea of Galilee that day. I want you to turn, if you've got your Bibles, to Psalm 44. Psalm 44. This, the psalmist felt this way. Psalm 44. Verse 23 and 24. Arouse yourself. Why do you sleep, O Lord? Awake, do not reject us forever. Verse 24. Why do you hide your face and forget our affliction and our oppression? Amen. Verse 25, which I don't know if you have on your screen. For our soul has sunk down into the dust. Our body cleaves to the earth. Rise up, 26. Be our help and redeem us for the sake of your loving kindness. Hallelujah. He felt the same way. Maybe that is why Mark included this event in the gospel. For the not so obvious lessons. Storms have never worried Jesus and never will. Hallelujah. Hush. Be still, church. First, first we must be still. Amen. Point two. Jesus is in control. Jesus Christ was as much in control as... And the disciples were just as safe, listening, while he was asleep as while he was awake. Just let me repeat that. Jesus Christ was just as much in control and the disciples were just as safe while, as much as while he was asleep as while he was awake. Hallelujah. There is no difference with the Lord. It's us who doesn't understand that. It's us who's slow to realize that. We're such creatures of evidence around us. We need to be believers of faith. Most of the time, life seems like a relentless storm. It does to me. Moving through one storm after another on a voyage. Well, I think it would be the same for you as well. They can be relationship storms. They can be marriage storms. They can be financial storms. They can be health storms. They can be employment storms. They can be mental health storms. They can be storms of loneliness, anger, jealousy, all kinds of storms, beloved. And we all have moments of fear and uncertainty. But I'm learning Jesus is in control. And Christ is not scared hallelujah he's not worried amen he's not depressed he's not uncertain and he's not anxious no he might be asleep or he might not be either way he's got the whole world in his hands i love that song i used to sing that song i first came across it when i was seven and i, and I think for three years straight i sang 
He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. I don't know. I think I was prophesying it all the time. Even if Christ chooses not to quiet the storm for you, do you know I'm safe with him? He's in the boat. The evidence of God is not the quieted storm. The evidence of God is that he's in the boat with you. It doesn't matter whether I see him awake. He is. It doesn't matter. It's not relevant whether I think the time is now for you to intervene. He knows about it and he will. It's absolutely not the case of proof according to my knowledge and experience. Amen? I I am not God. You are not God. We are not God. We do not have God's insight, God's wisdom and God's perception and, and <laughs> the eye of the Lord. He already is the plan. Hush, be still. I'm safe and you are safe with Jesus Christ our Lord who is King, God Almighty, full of love, compassion, glory and hope. Amen. That's what we need to stay on. Point three. Jesus is the word. John 1. And we're reading chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and apart from him nothing came into being, that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Amen? Jesus is the word. Now, let's go back to Mark and read verse 39. It says, And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down, and it became perfectly calm that's our god wow hallelujah we just need to hush just as he told the storm hush be still beloved you can have a storm within tell your storm right now hush be still in the name of jesus he by his will and his word as he is the word brings a raging sea to a perfect flat calm that's extraordinary I love the, these uh, pictures and we tried to really choose ones that, that depicted the, you know, the massive waves crashing and whew, going everywhere and water in the boat and the boat's tipping over and that's what it was and rain pouring down. Christ has never ceased to be the word church. Ephesians 1 and we'll read from verse 20. Which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the one to come. He put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. All things are in subjection. A raging sea is nothing. Not in the natural and not in the spirit, beloved. COVID-19 is a raging sea. It really is. It's a raging storm. But it's nothing to the Lord. Our responsibility is to have faith and hush, be still. Look back at Mark 4 and verse 40. And he says to them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Now, Mark recites that statement after he calmed the storm. In Matthew, it's before. It's also, this, this uh, event is also in Luke. Depends, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't depend really, I think, maybe when it happened. It's that it did happen. Jesus says it, praise God. Jesus helps us first, I think, then rebukes us. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Fear gives no reasonable account of itself if Christ is in the boat. Do you know our fear can become so great 
that we want to escape the boat. And that's where Jesus is. That we, want, that we want to leap into the raging ocean thinking that we're solving the problem. Beloved, our solutions are not solutions. Jesus Christ is, was and always will be the solution. We have the conquering Christ church, the word of God to fight for us. Amen. Do you still have no faith? You know, Christ wondered at the disciples' slowness to learn and he allowed this lesson on the sea. Do you think he didn't know the storm was coming? Faith, not yet, even after so many miracles and living with me for so long. I'm sure Jesus thought that. Beloved, we know him even better. You know, for a lot of years, I thought, oh, I wish I'd been a disciple. We could, you know, live and talk and eat with Jesus. And, oh, you know, I, I would be of such great faith. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit rebuked me about that. Because actually, we have centuries upon centuries upon centuries upon centuries and cent millennia to, to have seen and, and, and learned from the witnesses before us of all his miracles, of his servants. We can look back on all his servants who've walked with him. We can, we can appreciate, experience and, and grasp and have the revelation of all their journeys with the Lord. So actually we have more responsibility about that. Church, when in the tempest that sweep our lives, we sometimes pass into a great calm as suddenly as if we'd entered the eye of a cyclone. Beloved, this is the time to train your response, to train your habit of faith, to train how you view it. Are you terrified and panicking, anxious, worried? Or are you going to take your cue from the Lord and put your head on the pillow in the midst of the storm and be calm and be still? We need to have the confidence and faith in him to go, this is just like him. He is here. He's in the boat. Jesus never left the boat. Whether you know he is risen, seated at the right of the Father, Ephesians 1.20, awake, hallelujah. He might have been asleep then, but he's not and never will be again. As the son of man he slept, but he is the Son of God who never sleeps nor slumbers. Amen? He guards our life always. Psalm 121. And we'll look at verses 3 to 8. I read the first four. Now I'm going to read the last few. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper and the Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. The question is whether you believe that. Are you like Peter walking on the water right now? We can so easily lose sight of Christ and fear the waves crashing over us. Peter cried out to Jesus, the word of God in the flesh, saying, Lord, save me. Matthew 14, 31 says, Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Mm -hmm. Beloved, the Lord is our help. He has not fallen asleep. And whether he is or not, as in Mark, as the son of man, I am still safe. You are still safe. In the name of Jesus, say with me, I am still safe. But Christ is never unaware. He is fully God. He was not shaken or surprised. He was, is, and always will be fully God. Amen? Hush, be still, church. Trust the living God as never before. Jesus is never worried by the storm. The storm around us right now is never one, has never been one and will never be one. Whether there's a second, third, fourth or fifth wave, 
It will never be something that God is not God in and that you are not safe in. Amen. We cannot trust our eyes and even our ears, I think, at this time. We need to trust in discernment and faith the living God. He needs to become our terra firma, our, our solid upon solid. As solid as you're sitting in a chair right now, that needs to be Jesus to you. Amen? Jesus neither slumbers nor sleeps. Hush, be still, church.